Next up, we've got the story that has been all the news as of late uh, about uh, Colonial Pipeline. Hopefully you've got gas and you've been able to drive around, but Colonial Pipeline paid the hackers nearly $5 million in ransom. Uh, it's funny because earlier in the week, I tagged other articles. Uh, ransomware attack leads the shutdown of major U.S. pipeline system. Yep. FBI yep. confirms dark side ransomware was responsible for Colonial Pilot Pipeline hack. Yep. Now the pipeline is back up and running, but apparently they did pay... Uh, close to $5 million dude, dude. for this. But the tool that the hackers gave them was apparently too slow to decrypt the stuff that it had encrypted. So they kept using the backups that they had. What I don't understand is if you had backups, why did you pay? Why would you pay? Well, listen, here's my question. I don't understand. I, I, I really just have one question. So I believe if I'm not mistaken, there was a government agency that came out with some kind of like, you know, public service announcement, like, Hey, listen, don't put gasoline in plastic bags. Oh my and God. What I really want to know is Sanjay, is this, this is because of you, right? Like <laughs> I saw you. It doing is, that it is and... not actually because of me. And it's funny because my wife's car, we actually needed gas. It was yeah. down to only 40 miles of range. And I told her like, let's just not drive that car right now. Uh, mm -hmm. Drive mine. Mine's a plug-in hybrid. Yep. Most of our things are nearby anyways. Yep. Uh, less than 18 miles. So let's just drive that until this. Cause I was like, yeah. this is not going to last for This is well, a week. I took I took the approach of listen we have a small fleet of vehicles in our driveway um, <laughs> because because I mean because like I have a car and my wife has a car and then our 15 year old has the car that will be her car when she's 16 and then I have a truck that I was I was gifted that will eventually become my 14 year old's car so like we have a fleet of vehicles in our driveway with plenty of gas amongst all of them so there's no reason for us to bother with this right now so we didn't we yeah didn't go to, go to the but I I don't know about you but I saw the pictures on Twitter and uh, I saw some TikTok things too about this and yeah people were filling up jacuzzi tubs with gas. They were filling up dozens of jacuzzi gas cans. tubs. Yeah, like there are trailers with jacuzzi tubs, and they're filling up the jacuzzi tub with gasoline. Which, by the way, that is, is dumb not safe. on so many levels. Like well, on so many levels. So funny that yesterday I was watching the news, and there's a picture of a Hummer that was burnt out because the five or six gas cans in the trunk caught fire and the whole car caught on fire and burned off. So I guess now it doesn't matter. They don't really need the gas because they don't have a car anymore. Oh my gosh. Oh People gosh. are dumb. Like, you know, the things that you're doing to hoard up gas are it's, making the shortage worse there, for yeah, everybody. So much, worse. so much worse. So much worse. Just well, calm ooh. down. Speaking of, speaking of worse, thousands of Tor, I think I said so the right. So thousands yep. of Tor exit nodes attacked cryptocurrency users over the past year. Sanjay, I don't think I understood the title of this article. So can you just <laughs> so, like tell me what's going on here? So clearly by you just saying Tor, I think that's what you call it. I was like, oh, wait a minute. How does Adam not know what this is? I really hate it when I have to read the title of an article and I don't have, have any idea what's going on. And it I happens swear, like every couple of episodes. I so. swear we have talked about Tor in the past. Tor <laughs> is the technology that was created out of the US Navy and it's called it's it stands for the onion router okay. and basically it's a multi-layered way of surfing the web and protecting your privacy and your anonymity and so what the story is, is that there was apparently uh some malicious actor that over time was so anybody can run a tor node Right. Okay. So you could just take the software, run it on your machine, and then yeah. you become part of this network that is shuffling traffic around so that it's hard for anybody to know where the traffic is coming from or going to. So somebody was designating sites uh, or nodes that were exit nodes. And these are the ones that are actually a lot harder to, or a lot more dangerous in some ways to run because mm -hmm. that's where all the traffic goes out. So if you do something bad on tour, then that's the IP address that everybody knows and they'll come after you. But then you're like, that wasn't me. That was the this thing. Right. Um, so that's actually that end point. And so this malicious actor was running a bunch of these to basically try to steal cryptocurrency from people logging into certain sites. Ooh. And so they got a little bit of action and then they started ramping up their efforts significantly to a point where they were a one quarter of all of the exit nodes in Tor and they quickly got discovered and shut down. And then they got apparently upset because they tried again and again and quicker and quicker. They got shut down wow. um, all of those times. But 
the reason why I tagged this was a couple of things. First, okay. you got to be careful surfing the internet on an open connection, right? If you yeah. go to public Wi-Fi, yep. you got to be careful if you're at home even because you don't know what your provider's doing, but you also have to be careful when you're using some kind of VPN or service like Tor, yeah. especially Tor, honestly, because you don't know who is running those nodes in between you and the website, right? Right. Right. And this this really was only an issue um, on non HTTPS sites, but there were some, I think, man in the middle attacks there too that they were doing. But mm. um, if you're using a VPN service, make sure that it's a legitimate make sure, above make sure board it's VPN service. Yeah. Make sure it's reputable. Yeah. Yeah. Good, I mean, honestly, there, the one I will go ahead and say is the one that I recommended previously, the uh, private internet access, I am no longer yeah. a fan of. They right. have been acquired by somebody that has done some things in the past that I'm not a fan of. And so I've uh, moved on to another service provider. Which I don't know you if have, I've mentioned it. You, you have mentioned it. Oh, yeah. You've, I, been, okay, mole, been a tech yeah but, okay but, I did do a tech rec. Well, I was like, oh, again? if I haven't, if I, Molvad, M-U-L-L-V-A-D dot net. Molvad. Molvad. It rolls right off the tongue too, rolls right? right off the tongue. Molvad. Um, <laughs> but I, I, I didn't want to say it if I hadn't used it as a tech rec no, before you totally because have. You totally I would have, have spoiled yeah. a future tech rec. But, all right, uh, so but yeah. this next article, it, what all that I can think of when I read this title is, you can use some of the internet's oldest technology to purchase some of the internet's newest technology. So, so eBay officially opens its platform to NFT sales. So for those of you that are still using eBay... Uh, I, <laughs> There's a lot of people that use eBay. Come on. Uh, apparently, I haven't used eBay in probably a decade. I I just I, I just haven't had any reason to in so long. And so, but you can you can now you know buy NFT stuff on it. So that's cool. Well, Yay. I mean, one of these one of these days when you want to unload all those Cabbage Patch babies that you've collected when you were younger, yeah, you're gonna need yeah. eBay. You and if you want to make them into NFTs, so well. you can make them into NFTs and then sell those too. And yes, I do know you very well. Cabbage Patch, <laughs> you have Cabbage Patch dolls written all over you. <laughs> you have Cabbage Patch dolls written all over I, you. Oh I think gosh. that might be the title of the show right there. Oh my have, gosh. <laughs> there you go. Uh, next up, uh, Elon Musk says Tesla will stop accepting Bitcoin for car purchases, citing environmental concerns. If you are taking note as to how many days they did this for, uh, oh, this article doesn't say it. It was uh, some very short period of time. Very short like amount of time. Yeah. 39 days or something like that. It. I recall. I, I don't I, like this has been a known issue with Bitcoin for a long time. Like we've known that Bitcoin is not environmentally friendly. We talked about it on this show. And then Elon Musk has like been like he just a realized fanatic it. forever. And then he, they bought a million dollars in Bitcoin. Tesla did to the, oh, no, a billion, a, a billion, billion dollars. dollars. Right. Yeah. A billion dollars in Bitcoin. <laughs> And then somehow after all of that, he goes, oh, this isn't environmentally friendly. Now we're not going to accept that as a currency now, but oh, we're going to hold on to what we got. Oh, wait a minute. I'm running a electric vehicle company and a solar panel company because I want to be good to the environment. By the way, I'm also running a space company that blows up a bunch of uh, fuel and pollutes the environment. But, you know, we're going to ignore that piece. And so right. because it's off brand, uh, let's not do this Bitcoin thing anymore. I think what really it is, is something went sideways for them and they're realizing like, oh, maybe we don't want to do this crypto or, thing. Or maybe he just all. wants to go full in on Dogecoin. And like, he's, <laughs> I mean, he's been hardcore about that, man. So maybe that's, you know, maybe that's his thing. I don't some know. of his comments on Saturday Night Live made Dogecoin drop dramatically. It, yeah, it really so. did, at least temporarily. But yeah, it was, yeah. It was interesting. It was did, interesting. You, did you watch his Saturday Night Live thing? I, so I don't ever really watch Saturday Night Live because I'm an old fogey that goes to bed before it's on. Unlike you, <laughs> the spring chicken that stays up till three in the morning. But like, no, but so no, I, I tend to watch the playlist, the YouTube playlist the, a day or two after and so I, I did i've seen most of the bits they're pretty good they're pretty good i, I enjoyed it i so i didn't watch it. i don't actually ever watch it live anymore yeah, uh, yeah. i watch yeah. it the next day on hulu uh, okay. so i can watch it without uh, without commercials mm. but um i was i was actually not impressed uh a lot of the bits i found very flat um was there a music i think there was a music thing though wasn't there no, I, don't I think remember. so. I don't remember. Yeah. No, there must not have been because the last good music one was the the NFT one that uh, oh that, that was we great. talked about. Oh that yeah, one was yeah, fantastic. That was great, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, talking about a another electric vehicle uh, uh, story here, Fisker and Foxconn firm up plans for a sub thirty thousand dollar electric vehicle target U.S. production by late twenty twenty three. Interestingly, they might end up using the Wisconsin Foxconn facility 
that they got a lot of grief over because they took a lot of tax credits for it, but then never delivered on jobs. Mm. Maybe now they finally will, but I think this is fascinating. And, you know, it's also timely with the fact that we had this colonial pipeline thing just happen. I'm sure yep. everybody's like, wait a minute, a $30,000 electric vehicle? Sign me up because then mm-hmm. I don't have to worry about pipelines shutting down. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, this is where it's, it's good. going. It's all going yeah. here. It, it's just yeah. a question of when, you yeah. know, I mean, but it, it's, it's just, it's just a, a, a short term. I mean, it, it's, it's going to happen yeah. in the near future. So. I, I think the challenge though right now, and, and they still haven't figured this out is how do you do quick charging on an electric vehicle? Because yeah. honestly, yeah. an electric vehicle is not a road tripping vehicle. Like yeah. you, you cannot, I know not they yet. talk about it. Not yet. But, yeah. Not yet. There, but there I, will be though. I mean, because they're doing I the think fast so. charge things like where you can charge for 15 minutes and go over a hundred miles. So like there will come a point where it's like, you but can go, 300 miles, you take a 30 minute break, you recharge, you go 300 more miles. Like there'll come a point where it makes sense. Honestly, like 30 minutes though is still too long for me. Like, you know, I can fill up the fuel tank in, in like a couple of minutes and that's another, you know, whatever it is, 300 miles, 200 and something miles, right? Something like that. When we're road tripping, like we go, all right. you know, 10 hours up to DC that what you drive need. on an EV would be like 16 hours. That'd be I'll, painful. I'll tell you what you need. This is a new invention created right here on tech talk. Y'all. Okay. Is this there a domain need. we need to register for this too? The same way that a plane refuels in flight, we should be recharging cars on the road. So you just have a good old 18 wheeler. We just roll up right behind a charging 18 wheeler. <laughs> There's like so, some plug plugs right right into you just get towed for like an hour or so while you're recharging, yeah. taking a nap, and then you know you unplug and you're good to go. I, so I it's work. funny. It's funny. So there has been talk before about actually embedding electric recharging plates in the street. Yep. So as you're driving, it's you would charging. recharge your vehicle. Mm-hmm. I think it makes actually a lot of sense. There's things that you'd have to work out, like how do you charge people uh, money yeah, yeah. for their charging time and all that. But I mean, that's all. That's details, honestly, like that, that's yeah. not uh, rocket science. You can figure that out. Yeah. I, I think if you do that, it would make a lot of sense, right? Like yeah. you would know, oh, there's this lane that's coming up, like instead of a rest stop coming up, Charge hey, lane. this is the recharge lane. Yeah. You can pull in there and then you drive for, you know, 30 miles on that lane, knowing that you're charging up the whole time and then you that. pull back off. Like I, I think if they could do that on the highways, that would make so much that's sense. That's like my idea. I'm not going to lie. I feel like my idea is a good one. You, you think that you're going to call up a, a big rig to pull in front of you and then you're going to like dock with it as you're driving. I love that. You're like, you're trying to find the words to say like, that's a stupid <laughs> idea. Like you're like, you're searching for the words. I mean, have you seen how people drive in, in, in I have. Atlanta? Listen, like, I have I, seen I how know. people drive specifically around some of the roads that I'm near. And it like, there are different, there are certain roads around Atlanta, you know, you don't want your 16 year old driving on. And I live near several of those roads, my <laughs> friend. That's all I'm trying to say. So listen, speaking of not driving, okay. Uber Lyft to provide free rides to COVID-19 vaccine sites until July 4th. Again, another great example of tech companies doing good things. Thank you, Uber and Lyft. I love this. I, I think this was uh, probably a lot of foresight too from the uh, the current administration too to to yeah. make these relationships and kind of get this to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and look, yeah, goodwill to both yeah. Uber and Lyft. I yeah. I don't know that they're getting paid for this. I think they're doing this as a as a service yeah. to the country, yeah. right? Yeah. Like yeah. that's a good thing. Like they they should be doing this uh, this in other places too. Um, especially because uh, you might not be able to buy a new car. Uh, chip shortages force car makers to leave out some high-end features. So you might be able mm-hmm. to get a car, but it just might not have all the features. Like high-end you features want. like big data screens or like smart yeah. backup cameras or like, yeah. like high-end features that like high-end I features want in my car. Yeah. You might want to delay on a car just a little bit. I'm just saying. That's what I was thinking. When I read this article, I was like, I don't know if I want to buy a car just right now, Mm-mm. right? Um, what I, I found fascinating is they they call it something where they have vehicles that they continue to build without those features, and they're just going to put them off to the side until they can get the chips. There's like a word for what they call hmm. that. Um, Interesting. They said it in this article, and now I've forgotten what it was called. But anyways, they... Um, some of the companies, some of the car companies are going that approach. They're continuing to build the cars, but they're just not finishing them. So they're just going to sit off into a lot on the side until they can get the 
final electronics. And then other companies are like, no, we're just going to strip out a bunch of features and then just sell those to you instead. Um, yeah. And I'm thinking and like, probably not at a discount either. Probably not at a discount. Yeah. So yeah, 